Hello, greetings, welcome to yet another episode of our embryology discussion. We shall today see the zona pellucida. We've heard this term repeatedly and what exactly is the zona and what are its functions. Let's get to know now. What is zona pellucida? It is the specialized extracellular matrix that surrounds the mammalian oocyte. We've always noticed that the oocyte is surrounded by a kind of an envelope and this envelope is called the zona pellucida. What does the name zona pellucida indicate? Of course, the zona is also called the egg coat. The oocyte, the ovum, is the egg and the envelope that coats the egg is called the egg coat. The other name given to the zona pellucida is the pellucid zone. Zona pellucida sounds a little Latin and an anglicized version will be pellucid zone. The Latin term pellucier means shining through. In other words, when light shines through, you have a layer and light is thrown from here. If the light shines through this layer, viewing from this side, you're able to see the light. That is what we call as a transparent layer or a translucent layer, isn't it? So pellucier indicates a transparent or a translucent area. A similar structure does exist in the non-mammalian eggs also. However, in the non-mammalian eggs, this layer is called a vitelline envelope or a vitelline membrane. So, zona pellucida is exclusive for the mammalian embryos or the mammalian oocytes and it is the layer of glistening extracellular matrix that surrounds the mammalian oocyte. Now, just have a look at this picture. This is the egg proper, the human egg or the human ovum. And here is that layer, that white looking layer, right? This white layer is the zona pellucida. And these are the cells of the corona radiator. The cells of the corona radiator surround the zona pellucida. The zona pellucida first makes its appearance at the stage of the primary oocyte. It is secreted by the oocyte proper and of course by the cells of the ovarian follicle. And as seen before, the zona pellucida is surrounded by the corona radiata. Now here are some pictures for us to recap how the zona pellucida appears. Here is the primordial follicle with the oocyte there, the primordial follicle. The cells in the primordial follicle are called the pregranulosa cells. When it becomes the primary follicle, these cells will be renamed the granulosa cells. So here you look at it, the oocyte is here, the primary oocyte. At that stage, you find this is the nucleus of course and here is the oocyte and this brown layer is the zona pellucida. It's a clear layer. It's extracellular. It does not have cells. So it is a very clear layer. And here are the, the cells of the granulosa. These granulosa cells will later on become the corona radiata and related structures. So here you find at the next stage, when the primordial follicle has become the primary follicle, you still find the zona pellucida and the granulosa cells later on give rise to the theca cells, the cumulus cells and so on. The primordial follicle has now developed to become an antral follicle. However, the relationship of the zona to the oocyte remains the same. Here you find the granulosa cells, the corona radiator here, the theca here, 
all those things, the relationship has changed because of the appearance of the antrum. But you still find the zona pellucida here surrounding the oocyte. And in this picture, the oocyte has been hatched. In other words, ovulation has occurred and you find the polar body, the zona pellucida still remains the same. So, the zona pellucida surrounds the oocyte and the ovum. Here, we call this now a ovum. The first polar body has made its appearance. The nucleus of the ovum, the zona pellucida still seen and this is the plasma membrane. This black line is the plasma membrane of the ovum, the cytoplasm of the ovum and here is the nucleus of the ovum. The corona radiata cells are still there and this is the zona pellucida.